Today we're going to take a look at the rules of fine art prints as I create my very first limited edition collection with the help of the Canon Pro 4000 printer. I'm Lindsay Adler and I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York City and I've been a photographer for more than half of my life. And one of the things that I've come to realize is there's nothing better than seeing your images in print, plus having other people appreciate those prints. I've sold prints to hundreds and hundreds of portrait clients, and I've even had some of my images up in shows at local coffee shops, but I've never really gotten into the world of fine art photography. But recently, I've really become interested in entering new territory and creating my very first collection of limited edition fine art prints. And this world is entirely new to me. It's completely different than my usual commercial and portrait photography. So I've had to do a lot of research. I didn't know anything about this. So I didn't exactly know where to start. There's so much to learn. Well, thankfully, I know a few experts. So I went ahead, I read some articles, I chatted with expert printers, but I've also spoken to two very talented fine art photographers, Brooke Shaden and Claire Rosen. And these two brilliant women, they provided me really, really helpful insights to get me started on this journey of creating my very first collection. So today I'd like to take some time and share the lessons that I've learned as I've been researching what it takes to create your very first limited edition fine art print collection. If you're planning to create prints that are for sale, particularly in galleries or as a fine art collection, you need to create them in a limited edition. You select the sizes that your prints will be available in. Keep it simple with standard sizes in small, medium, and large. So for example, if your work is in a two by three ratio, then your small print might be eight by 12, a medium print could be 20 by 30, and a large print could be 40 by 60. For each of these sizes, you set the addition, which means for that particular image in that particular size print, you will never ever create or sell more than the number you specify. Now typically, the larger the print, the fewer the addition, and of course, the more expensive the print. So for example, perhaps you have a 20 by 30 inch print and you have an addition of 10. This means for that image, that print at 20 by 30 inches, you will only ever have 10 prints available. But maybe for the 40 by 60 size of that, the addition is only five and so on. There aren't any hard and fast rules and each artist is going to have to set their own additions. By having a limited edition, this increases scarcity and therefore the value of the prints. If you have something called an open edition, that means you can create as many prints as you possibly want but of course, this means they have significantly less value, and this is not really recommended if you are eventually hoping to have your work in galleries. Along with your prints, you're going to want to create something called a certificate of authenticity. And on the certificate, it includes the number of the prints, the edition, the medium, the title of the print. And if you don't know where to start, Hanimal actually creates a template and has these certificates of authenticity that you can buy, and they include these little holograms that you can put on the certificate and the print. You'll have to create very careful records for yourself of every single print and every edition that you sell. As you probably assume, superior quality of the print is extremely important. The images need to be museum quality. You have to carefully oversee the prints to ensure that they're up to your standards. Now, some fine art photographers, they opt to work with master printers. They work hand in hand with these craftsmen to make sure the prints are looking their best. Other photographers, on the other hand, they choose to print the images themselves because they want even more control. When you start the printing process, you're going to have to carefully select the ideal paper for your work. So what is that paper? Well, I mean, it really depends on what your work looks like. Do you shoot really rich, saturated, high contrast images? Or maybe your work is more subtle. It's a little bit more painterly. Different styles will require different paper. If you're working with a master printer, they will recommend some papers for you. Now, I encourage you to buy some sample paper packs. You print your intended images out on different papers and see which papers are really allowing them to shine. Now, I personally use Hanimule Photo Rag Barita because I love how this handles color and contrast. And as you know, my images are very colorful and have a lot of contrast. Plus, it's a little bit thicker. It's a heavier weight paper, which I prefer for fine art prints. Furthermore, you have to remember that your paper and your ink need to be archival. This means they need to last the test of time. Now, for example, the paper I just mentioned, it's actually rated museum quality because it's very age resistant. Research your paper, research your printer, research your ink, all of these need to be archival and rating. If you're printing the images yourself, typically you'll want to work with a very high quality inkjet printer. If you've ever seen the fancy word gicle, it really just means inkjet, but that doesn't sound as fancy and as expensive. So what makes a high-end printer? Well, first of all, you'll need a variety of inks. 
you know, less expensive printers, less high quality. They only have a few inks, maybe your red, green, blue, black. Uh, but you need a lot more to render perfect tones and colors in your images. My printer of choice is the Canon Image Prograph Pro 4000 large format printer. This printer has 11 archival quality inks, like 11. There's a black, a matte black, a cyan, a photo cyan, and so on. Furthermore, there's another cartridge called a chroma optimizer. So what this does, it improves the evenness of the shine across the print, particularly when you're using gloss or semi-gloss papers, and reduces something called bronzing. Bronzing is the fact that it makes like this green bronze cast on the image when the ink is not even on the surface, which is definitely not something you want when you're creating fine art prints. I've used a smaller Canon Image Prograph Pro 1000 printer for my portfolio, for my client images, and I fell in love. And recently I've decided to upgrade. And I've upgraded to the Canon Image Prograph Pro 4000 because it allows me to print huge prints. Uh, the printer allows me actually to go to 44 inches wide by however long I want in length because it prints on rolls. I can print several images side by side and this saves me time, this saves me space. The prints are so beautiful and they're definitely gallery or museum quality. In fact, many professional printers use this exact tool to create fine art prints for their clients. And of course, the resulting images, the prints, they're archival. I'm just starting on this journey in the fine art world, but I'm hoping this is a bright new start for my artwork and then maybe a new facet for my business. I hope that you found this video useful, and especially if you're interested in creating your very first fine art prints. If you'd like to know more about the tools used in this video, visit adorama.com. And of course, if you've enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe to learn more. Thanks for watching. And by the way, if you'd like to check out my very first collection of limited edition fine art prints, visit lindsayadler.photo forward slash prints. Thank you.